What's up everybody? Welcome to the back of the field. This is Vanilla Wafers and in today's episode I want to show you guys some photos and videos that I was able to take while going to the Toyota Save Mart 350 at Sonoma Raceway. If you don't know where Sonoma Raceway is, it's located in Northern California in Napa Valley and Sonoma Valley. This is home to wine country in California. There are some be beautiful views and beautiful wineries in this area that you get to pass through while going to the racetrack. And the racetrack is such a great site as well. Here's the main entrance right here as you get to go right into turn number 11 right next to it to your campsite towards the racetrack and we were staying on top of a hill this was our view above the racetrack eh, a little bit closer but we were able to walk on over here towards the um, Trans Am cars on Friday and got to meet some amazing people including Mike Joy. Mike Joy was uh, participating in this event and he came over and talked to us he showed us some of the cars and even gave us an opportunity to sit in the car I was super excited here I was actually struggling so Mike Joy helped me out but when I got in there I was just so excited and already realized that this weekend was going to be absolutely fun and it wasn't just me able to sit in the car mechanical Manny was able to sit in there as well ah just look at that smile on him he's having a good old time but it wasn't just the Trans Am cars that we were able to see on Friday. There was not much going on, but a lot of the vendors were coming in, including this guy who brought in this Lightning McQueen car. And we also had a Geico campers party where there was a lot, a lot of drinking. They had free, all you can eat, all you can drink, and we took advantage of that. I was drinking seltzers while Mechanical Manny was drinking bush lights. And at this point, I didn't even remember what was going on. I don't even know who this guy is. This guy was taking photos with us. It was great. And then and then this photo here was with the Mike Harder Lemonade ladies. I don't even remember too much here. But overall, it was a great party that Sonoma Raceway put on because they wanted to welcome back to the fans. Now let's move on to Saturday. Good morning, YouTube. It's a beautiful morning here in Sonoma, California. Got my ibuprofen. So recovering from the hangover from the campers party. And going to go down to Sonoma Raceway. And let's do it. Over here right at turn number two. Looks like they're just getting the track all ready for practice. They're gonna be doing the Trans Ams at about 9.30 and then the qualifying for the ARCA at about 10. We just saw the tents back there. Wearing my mask because we still gotta wear it at all times here at Sonoma. Still gonna be a fun freaking day. Finally, after a little bit of walking, we were able to make it down to the main grandstands. You see those flags right there? That is where the main shuttle buses just come in to drop people off. So they drop them off right at the main gate. So you don't have to walk that far. And all your food vendors are right here, all the fun stuff to do. And they even had the Trans Am cars out here once again. They were getting ready to get on going. And you see right there, you have all the drivers here. Just talking about the history of these cars, making the fans feel very welcomed and very informed. And you don't really get that too much at other racetracks. Like you have most of these cars here on on the infield not so here with Sonoma it is right there right behind the grandstands you can actually see them in the background and all the cars are out here all the drivers are talking to everybody so you not only do you get to watch some amazing racing here at this road course but you get to be able to come up to these cars and be able to check them out look at the great paint schemes look at what the drivers have to go through to get ready for these races and there was about 24 Trans Am cars it wasn't like these suckers were quiet these suckers were loud let me just give you a little taste Oh yeah, these suckers were loud. Only here at Sonoma, you can be this close to Victory Lane. Main grandstands right there, and they come over here for Victory Lane. So, if you ever wanna come here, you get a good opportunity to check out the winner. All you have to do is just do a quick walk away. There's Mechanical Manny. He's in Victory Lane, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're just doing practice at this point, so we decided to go on over to the merchandise trailers in between the main grandstands and turn number 10. This is where you can get your favorite hats and favorite t-shirts from your favorite drivers. Everybody's over here. Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch get their own trailers. If you ever get an opportunity to go to a race, make sure to also stop by one of these trailers so you can support your favorite driver. But enough about that. Let's get back onto the racetrack. So what you're seeing right here is the Trans Ams going out and doing a few laps. Now, they were not running at full speed. In fact, it was mostly kind of rigged in the sense where they tried to make it as close as possible and have as many lead changes. 
But you got to remember, we haven't had any cars here at this racetrack for over two years through the pandemic. So just seeing any cars out there was just really great to see. And they did put on a good show. We were still on the edge of our seat watching these cars go around the racetrack. Mike Joy, even though he was racing this, he didn't do anything spectacular. He was just out there all for just show and tell. And really, he was just out there just trying to collect last place winnings, kind of like I do on the podcast episode. But that was a Trans Ams. Nothing to really uh, take away from there. It's just more of one of those things just for the fans out at the racetrack. Now, I mentioned that we had a few vendors there. This one was really cool. So this was General Tires vendor here. They were sponsoring the Arkham Menards West race, and they had a really, really cool throwback here. This is Richard Petty's car back in the 80s when they used to run Buicks. If you don't remember the success that Buicks had in the 80s, make sure to watch one of Slap Shoes videos. He does a really good documentary about this. But basically, the Buicks were some of the most dominant cars back then. And what made these cars so special is they look so much similar to the cars that you can go out and get at the dealership. So not only could you go see this car go win the race, which Buick did a lot of in the 80s, but then you can go out to a dealership and get a car that almost looked the same like Richard Petty. It was a great time to be a NASCAR fan. This is just some of the norms that you'll get going to any racetrack in NASCAR. Going back to the races, they had the Trans Ams come back out once again. They were running multiple races this weekend, so we got to see them once again go back out on the racetrack, and as you can see, they're not really going that fast, but it's still really fun to see these cars out here. It doesn't matter if it's just the ARCA cars, if it's the Trans Am, any races beforehand are always a good entertainment for the fans, and you can see right here just going around the racetrack, everyone really enjoyed it, taking photos taking videos everyone still appreciated it and still really fun to get that nostalgia feeling seeing these 70s and 60 cars back out on the track the end though in a photo finish it was the number 77 to get the victory it was that lime green card that just went by and i was pretty excited because that was my favorite car out on the racetrack mechanical manny his finished fifth and then mike joy finished 23rd so yeah uh, if you're a Mike Joy fan, bummer. And then we immediately moved on to the ARCA race. They always have a race here on Saturday before the cup event. This series has kind of gotten a little bit of a blow due to the pandemic. Usually we see about 35 plus cars in this race. Fortunately, they only had 22 and there was only one cup driver running in this and that was Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe obviously had the fastest car, but there were some noticeable other drivers that you might have remembered. Dylan Lupton was in this race. He ran a few races part-time for BK Racing in the late 2010s. Other than that, though is a lot of these small team drivers just trying to keep up with these bigger groups and there they are coming around the back straight away even though the field's a little small believe me when i say that these suckers are still loud and they put on one hell of a show for the fans <laughs> Holy cow, I missed the shot entirely, but if you did not notice, that was Chase Briscoe in the number 14. He led every single lap in this race. I mean, there was no surprise there. Usually when you get one of these cup drivers down here, they absolutely dominate. So not the most exciting race in the world, but still, it was a lot of fun. You, it went by super quickly, and still all the fans around the racetrack had a lot of fun. And Chase Briscoe put on a show there at the end. He was able to get the checkered flag and do a few burnouts here. So props to Chase Briscoe. He actually never raced out here on this racetrack beforehand. Then he comes out here and immediately dominates. It's a great practice for him and just to show how dominant of a driver some of these cup guys are. I mean, there's there's a reason why they're in the top leagues. They can go into any kind of series as absolutely dominate whenever they want to. You usually see that with Kyle Busch and the Xfinity and the Truck Series, but even people like Chase Briscoe come down to a lower series like this and just absolutely dominate. Definitely burned down some rubber. A lot of fans were excited about that. I even got an opportunity to meet Chase Briscoe after the race. He handed me a few hats. Um, they're hats that you get for Victory Lane from all the track sponsors. He even signed a few things for me. Overall, Chase Briscoe is a super cool guy, and I'm so happy I got to meet him at the end of this Saturday race. But we were hanging out there for a couple more hours. That was the end of the Saturday event and look at this beautiful photo. Only at Sonoma you can get these photos. Day number two, heading down to the racetrack for the big one, Toyota the Save Mart 350. I can already hear them going out there right now. I think that's the Trans Ams practice. It's gonna be one hell of a day.
probably already knows this, but look how close I am to pit road. Usually at most other racetracks, the pit road entrance is on the infield, which is kind of far away from the spectators. Not so here at Sonoma. They're actually right here in front of the main grandstand. So you get to see all the pit stops done right in front of you. You get to see all the action. All the pit crew members are just walking right beneath you. You'll even see a few of the drivers. And man, if you know who exactly to look for, man, you're going to be super excited to some of the people who come through there. I got an opportunity to meet a lot of drivers beforehand. I even got to meet one of my favorite drivers of all time, William Byron, driver of the number 24. He just stopped by and took a few photos with us and also signed a few things. That was absolutely great. Even the president, Steve Phelps, came by and talked to me for a little bit. Also had drivers like Christopher Bell. Now, you kind of notice on his face that he's kind of like in a rush there. Just always remember that even though you're having a blast, these guys are still at work, still focused. So if they're not able to spend a lot of time with you, don't ever feel like they're being dicks. But Guy Fieri was there. He was driving the pace car. I got to meet him. And also I got to meet Bruton Smith. He's actually the CEO of all the SMI racetracks. Super cool dude. And even Kyle Shanahan was there greeting everybody. He was the Grand Marshal. And then the biggest one, Michael Jordan even came down. That was definitely a big shock for me. But the Trans Ams came back out again. There's Mike Joy taking out on a few more laps. And I even got to see my childhood hero, the number 24 driver of Jeff Gordon. But the pre-race ceremonies were coming to an end. It was time to take our seats around the cutouts and hear those engines fire. And the race was off, and let me tell you something, it was a big strategy race. Basically, the way it works here at Sonoma Raceway is you got to have the best strategy as far as fuel and tires go. Yes, you want to be one of the fastest cars, but you also have to make sure your pit crew and your crew chiefs are on top of it. Usually, a lot of racetracks, they don't really focus too much on that, but here at Road Courses, it is top priority. So every driver was trying to get the upper edge on each other throughout the entire race. You can definitely tell which drivers were the most dominant. Rick Henrik was absolutely pulling the way. If you've seen what they've been doing the last few weeks, it's just been unbelievable. Especially with the number five of Kyle Larson, the number nine Chase Elliott, and even Alex Bowman and William Byron have been there in the mix. Those are all the drivers for Rick Henrik. But for this race, it seemed like a lot of people were a little upset due to the fact that they were having stage cautions, which they feel like kind of defeats the purpose of all these strategies but hey it was still a chance and opportunity for all these drivers to bunch back up and still put on one hell of a show here in this race and honestly i got to see everything here i got to see the pit stops uh, on during green flag during the caution i also got to see passing in front of me got to see cars run into each other just everything you look for here in a road course race. You want to see some tight action. You want to see some bumping and banging. You want to see drivers take a risk when other drivers won't. And you got to see cars just doing everything they can to salvage out a good finish. You got all of that here at Sonoma. In the end, though, we had the hometown hero, the number five of Kyle Larson, taking it home and getting his first victory here at Sonoma and another victory for Rick Henrik. You see Mechanical Manny, he was hella pumped. I was pumped because I'm a huge Rick Henrik fan as well. But the team was just absolutely phenomenal. Just so much dominance. I haven't seen that kind of dominance since 06 when I went for my first time ever at a NASCAR event. But Kyle Larson, even after the race, he still signed a bunch of stuff for us. And what an amazing weekend. You, you couldn't ask for anything better here at Sonoma and we got to see everything and just like that just eight hours of entertainment here on Sunday just gone just went by just that quickly but it was so exciting just so great for Sonoma Raceway to put this race back on and it was just a lot of fun um even though we were running at 33 percent capacity uh, you still got to meet drivers. I got to meet people like William Byron. I, you can see the signature right there. Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe. I even got to see um, the president of NASCAR, Stephen Phelps, and then also Marcus Smith. So a lot of people were out here and just a lot of fun. I hope a lot of fans enjoyed it. Hopefully on TV it was a good race because it felt really fun. It felt like a really good strategy race. And then near the end it was just a good old action-packed road course race. 
most people may not find that the most entertaining, but still, you, we got to see everything. Um, this track just provides it all. You can go to the main grandstands, and at the same time, you can go by Victory Lane. You get to go meet the drivers. There's access to everything. One minute, you're just standing next to a fan, and then next, you can have Michael Jordan pull up next to you. And only at Sonoma, you can really get that. And obviously, I want to come back here again. It was a lot of fun. I hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the race too. A lot of fun. And thank you so much for to Sonoma for just opening it up again. But above all, guys, thank you so much for listening to the best and trying out all the rest. I have been able to fill up the last few remaining minutes of your time. So you all take care. This has been Vanilla Wafers here at Sonoma.